roots, twin screw, centrifugal, and electric superchargers. What are the differences between each kind? Well, today I'm going to answer that very basic question, and I'm going to begin with the Root Style Supercharger, which has actually existed for the longest amount of time. So it predates to the mid-19th century, and it was invented by two brothers in Indiana. That's where the name Roots comes from, because that was their last name. Now, these two identical and rotating lobes are connected to a gear set that is spun by the crankshaft with a belt. Now, as these lobes rotate away from each other, they create a pocket of air that is then pushed down into to an intercooler that cools the air before it reaches the combustion chamber. Now it is important to note that a root style supercharger does not compress air, so that brings us on to our next topic or style of supercharger, the twin screw. Like the root style blower, this also features two rotating lobes. It actually takes after design, but does include a couple of key different features. Taking a look at this graphical illustration will exemplify exactly the differences. So the rotors are a male and female rotor combo. They are not the same. But during crankshaft rotation and subsequent gear set rotation, they actually spin in the same direction, creating a pocket of air, compressing it, and sending it down into the combustion chamber. More air in the combustion chamber equals more fuel, which equals more combustion or more power. Now, twin screw blowers not only vary from the root style with the type of actual vortices that they're using or lobes, but also contributes to quicker boost delivery and less thermal inefficiency than a root style blower. Now it's time for arguably the coolest of all the supercharger types, the centrifugal supercharger. The design features a belt driven compressor wheel similar to that of a turbo that in turn uses centrifugal force to push more air into the intake manifold and create more air for combustion. So in summary, air is drawn into the turbine, which is spun by the crankshaft. Then centrifugal force pushes this air to an intercooler cooler where the air is now cooled and then charged into the intake manifold increasing manifold pressure so when people say that these setups sound like a jet well they were used on jets so now you guys understand the correlation but let me know if you all would like to see a video explaining the history of centrifugal supercharger use in aircraft now a lot of people may not know this but centrifugal superchargers were very very incremental during world war ii and they were utilized in planes such as the p-38 now i want you guys to remember this but the common theme between all three types of these superchargers thus far are that they are blowing more air into the combustion chamber. Now for the final and probably the lamest out of all types of superchargers, you have the electric supercharger, which is basically just a centrifugal supercharger that has its compressor wheel rotated by an electric motor.